Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. Today's episode, Ruby Snack Number 9, will feature nested forms part 2, Add and Delete Child Objects with Cocoon. If you'd like to code along, you'll just need to have a Rails app created, RSpec installed and set up, Capybara WebKit installed and set up, and a parent and child models created using nested forms. You can check out these videos, the Capybara WebKit database cleaner episode, as well as the nested forms episode. Today's plan of action will involve adding child objects in the nested form. Now Rails does not support adding fields to nested forms on the fly, so we're going to use JavaScript to accomplish this. We'll use the gem Cocoon to provide the JS, but you could certainly write your own JS if you prefer. This is just an option. A quick sidebar, I've been using Cocoon in several of my projects, but had not tested it. So this is the first time I've tested it and it was quite an adventure, so here we go. Let's first take a look at the add crew member spec. Here we have the simple BDD that will tell us what our spec is about. So the scenario is visitor adds new crew member and we've gone ahead and add that JS true because we'll be using JavaScript and we need to check that. Given the visitor views starship, when visitor adds crew member, then the visitor views the updated starship. Simple enough. The trick to this is that Capybara WebKit does not play nice with factory because of the different threads that it creates to run the JS. You could change the setting in the Rails helper for config use transactional fixtures to false, and then you could use factories with Capybara WebKit. However, when I tried that, it actually broke my other specs. So instead, I'm just gonna create a new Starship here in the spec. I've gone ahead and extracted that as a module since I'm going to be using that in two different specs. So first, the visitor views the Starship, create Starship, and expect it to have the name, Enterprise. Next up, the visitor adds crew member. We're already on the show page once a record is created, so we'll go ahead and click Edit, and then we'll click that link, Add Another Crew Member and that's what we'll put in with Cocoon. By adding the field with JS, the actual ID number is actually a very long string. So instead, we're gonna need to find it by the CSS. So we're gonna find it by CSS crew name and then set that with Dr. Catherine Pulaski, if we all recall from Star Trek Next Generation, was around for one season. So then we'll find the crew division and set that as science. And then we'll click the button Update Starship. So next we should see the updated Starship and should have that content that we entered. Here is a quick demo. I'm going to add a crew member and then also go ahead and show you deleting a crew member, which will do the spec and everything later in the episode. On a Starship show page, we'll hit edit and then we will click on add new crew members and we will enter Dr. Pulaski and change her to science and then update Starship and you'll see she's been added. So if we edit again, and then click on remove crew member, she goes away and we update, and now she's no longer there. As always, let's run the spec first and see where to start. In our terminal, we will run the spec and see what to do first. So it's not finding that method create starship, so let's make that module. In our spec support helpers, we will add the module starship where we will create two different kinds of starships, a regular starship with just a name, and then a starship with crew members. And we're going to allow ourselves to have different crew names if we need to for fun in other specs. I'm gonna go ahead and add it now. I'll be using that method a little later when we delete the crew member. One last step is to include this module for our tests. Back to our text editor, let's open up that helper under support helpers and add that module below our other one from a previous episode. And then let's make that pretty, move that over under module Starship, and then scroll to the bottom and add that line to include this module in all of our specs. If you watched Ruby Snack number eight and added mailers to your app, actually I found a little bit of an error. I should have used this if statement to see if the user had entered an email when creating a starship. Otherwise, the starship won't create. My actual spec only had the instance when entering that email. So now we'll fix it up so it's ready for the future. So we'll add this if statement 
to the controller. That's controllers, Starship controllers. And then we'll scroll down to the create method. And then we'll replace the Starship mailer line with our new if statement to only send it if an email is in fact present. And make that pretty and it's all fixed up. It's time to run the spec again to see if we can create that Starship now that we have the module installed. So let's see what's next. All right, and scroll up. Yay, so new error. It's time to add that link to an add another crew member. So we're gonna use Cocoon. We're gonna add Cocoon to our gem file and then bundle. Then we simply have to require Cocoon in our application JS. Jumping back to our editor, let's set that up. Let's go to gem file and add it. Let's add it underneath device. So add that and save. And then go to our terminal where we will just bundle it up very quickly there. And now we will go to assets. JavaScripts, application.js, and we'll add it just above require tree. I like to put new things just above that. I'm not gonna take you through the whole GitHub readme for Cocoon, just gonna point out a few things in the examples. It talks about finding the elements in the partials, so that's one reason I set up the views like I'm going to show you in just a moment, just to point out for the link to remove association method that this gem gives you, it actually requires a class wrapper to be used in your view. So you'll see that in just a moment. And here it is, we're going to refactor our forms just a bit. So we're gonna take the Starship form and take out the crew member fields and render that as a partial. And of course, we're gonna add a link to add association. That's a method that Cocoon gives us to add the crew member. We're gonna put F and that's what's referencing the form in the next partial. And then it'll be for crew members, which is the child of Starship. For the crew member fields partial, we will put the actual form all the labels and text fields and the select, just as we had it before. But you'll see that we have now called this class crew members, and that's crucial for later in the episode. Alrighty, time to make those changes. Let's go to views, starships, and then form. And then we'll select everything under crew members, and now include the new form that has the partial, and the link to add association. All right, let's make that prettier over and save that. Now we have to make a new partial. So we will go over to say file new and save that right away as crew member fields. .html .erb. and save that and now we'll include that new partial so all of the fields that we need for our crew member let's go ahead and run the spec again and see how we're doing and it's running and yay now you can add a new crew member next up is our delete crew member spec because as we know dr pulaski only lasted one season so we're going to write this very similar to the add crew member spec. We're going to use JS true to check the JavaScript. So we're going to visit the starship and delete the crew member and see a starship without the crew member. So this time we're going to use that method in the module create starship with crew member and we're going to enter Dr. Catherine Pulaski. This time when we click edit, we will now click remove crew member and then expect Dr. Pulaski not to be there anymore. Let's put that bad boy in. We'll create a new feature file and call it delete crew member spec.rb. Okay, that's saved now. So let's now include the spec that we wrote. to make sure that we can delete those crew members. New spec means that it's time to run the new spec. Back in our terminal, it's loaded up and running to see what we need to do to make it pass. And here we go, let's scroll up. 
So it's doing good. It just need to add that link, remove crew member. We will add to our crew member field partial the second method that Cocoon gives us, which is the link to remove association. We need to include the name of the link as well as the form identifier. And this is where we need to add that wrapper class crew members so that it can find it on the page. It has to know where to look in order to remove the child object. Moving back into our crew members partial, we will add it at the bottom. Now we have our link to remove the association. Next, we need to set up allowing destroy for these nested attributes. In the Starship model, we will add the line allow destroy true under accepted nested attributes for crew members. Then in the Starship controller, we will add ID and colon underscore destroy to then allow those crew members to be destroyed. Jumping back to our editor, we'll start with models Starship RB and replacing this with our new line, allow destroy true, and save that. Next, let's go back to our controller and scroll all the way down to the Starship params, and we'll just replace that one line, adding in the two new attributes that we need. Now let's jump back to our terminal and run the spec again to see where we are, see what's happening. And it passed, we can now remove crew members. That wraps up this episode of Ruby Snacks. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or email me at melissa at rubythursday.com. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking that button right there on your screen. Also, if you are not already on my mailing list, be sure to click on the big Ruby to take you to rubythursday.com where you can sign up and get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.